Having a great workflow can have a huge impact on your productivity, especially when you're still trying to get better at doing something. Putting a little time into eliminating friction is always great. The more friction you can eliminate, the better your workflow will be. So we'll start off talking about the most boring part, but is necessary, that is note-taking. A little backstory, I have used two of the most overrated note-taking apps, which is Notion and Obsidian. These two apps are some of the best note-taking apps that I've used so far, and it has served me well, but it didn't last. I went from Notion to Obsidian to just simply writing and editing a .md file in my editor. While Notion provides a simple way to take notes, it is simply just like its competitors if you don't count in the databases, task management, and automations, which Notion is surprisingly very good at, given the fact that you know how to set it up though. So there is definitely a learning curve to this. If you take notes and manage all your tasks all in one place, Notion is actually perfect. Obsidian, however, is like an all-over-the-place note-taking, but it's still very good at bringing things back together. You don't really need to have an organized file and folder structure to start taking notes and come back to them. Also, because I program and I've gotten used to the way I edit text when programming, I wanted to have the same experience when taking notes as well. Some of you might know what I'm talking about, and it's Vim Motions. For people who don't know, it's a god-tier level of editing text. So for my workflow, I sort of have to find the balance between the two. And as of right now, I prefer just to write my notes this way. I didn't throw Notion or Obsidian away. I just used them way lesser than I did before. These two serve different purposes, and you don't have to choose one over the other. In fact, my Obsidian vault still exists. I just don't edit text in Obsidian anymore. I do it in my code editor instead. But when I want to read my notes, and I want a better reading experience, I just go back to Obsidian and read it from there. I can just edit my notes in my markdown file, and when I save it, it should also show up instantly in Obsidian. Don't even get me started on the themes because there is a lot of them. You can even add some custom CSS if you want. For storing my notes, I can still use GitHub or iCloud, so that part is covered. I also like to use Xcalidra inside Obsidian to help me plan out the projects I do. Xcalidra is a great whiteboard tool. I would go in here and draft my ideas. I find that it really helps me get a big picture on how I should start building something. By doing this, I'm also documenting the way I build the project, and it helps me reflect my progress on how my planning starts to improve over time as I build more and more. You also might be wondering, what does this mean? Am I no longer using Notion for note-taking? Yeah, I kinda don't. At least not for these super detailed ones. I prefer to use Notion for big projects, like projects that I need to manage and track, and maybe some important notes that I haven't exported to Obsidian, then yeah, I still go back to Notion for that. You will also see Raycast scattered throughout this video because Raycast really is just a Mac powerhouse at this point. It can act as an application launcher on the basics of it, but it could also be so much more, and you'll see it more in this video. I also have quick notes from Raycast that I can toggle from anywhere. I mostly use this for writing down questions so that I don't get distracted and forget. It's very important for me as I find myself writing down more questions than I usually do, only because it was easier to do so. This then leads me to understanding things better. Usually, I would have to stop what I was doing and go to one of my note-taking apps, and if I'm already writing some notes, I would have to create a new note and then write the question down. You can see there is a lot of friction in between those steps, and I try to eliminate that as much as I can. For example, I can just toggle this anywhere and write down the questions I have, close the window off and come back to it later. My notes will still be there and I never had issues where the notes are disappearing. You can create up to five notes if you are not a Raycast Pro user, but that's good enough for me and I think it's good enough for most people. You can easily just create a new note by doing command N and that will just create a new note and then you can switch back and forth between your notes by doing command P to select the notes. Then to delete a note, you can use control X to delete a note. You could also use other commands for like bullet points or links or code blocks, but I don't really need it that much as it does support most of the markdown formats, but there are options if you need it. You don't have to use it to write questions like I do. This is just an example, so you could use it however you want. So this is where we'll get into the task management. The one thing Notion is superior at, or is it not? For some people, it's overwhelming and complicated to get started, and yes it is. It was for me three years ago, and with everything they've added today, 
If you don't got the time and you are just getting started in Notion, I would say skip it. Unless you feel like you really need to have that second brain kind of system, then by all means you can go ahead and do it. There are many tutorials, like hundreds of them, teaching you how to use Notion. If time is not your enemy, then this could be worth it in the long run. There is an alternative though. Nowadays, I just simply use Todoist. For a small simple task that I do daily, I would rather use Todoist than Notion. Because Todoist really does have great support for syncing with mobile devices. In Todoist, you can add a task or recurring task in natural language. It can act as a reminder if you write down the time as well, and you can also link it to your Google Calendar if you want. So all the basic features you would want for just adding small tasks daily is just simply available there. So I just used the Todoist Raycast extension, and then it's this one called the Quick Add Task. You can then just type the task in and enter the time, just press enter, and it should show up in your Todoist inbox. I prefer it this way because when I'm in the mix of everything, I need to quickly add a small task as a reminder, and I don't want to have to distract myself going to Notion and putting up with all these boxes and tables and multiple things all at once. I simply just need to add a task and take a complete task when I need to, in and out. I find that making things too complicated can sometimes make your productivity worse. So I'm starting to lean towards simple things that gets the job done. Now let's get to the most important part, and that is window tiling. In terms of tiling, you might ask why even use tiling? Well, in short, the window tiling is simply the best way to manage your windows effectively. For example, the way I have it set up, your apps are placed in different windows and you can navigate to each window with a keybind. You can have multiple apps split in that one specific window and then you can move apps from one window to another. If you don't like how the tiling works, then there's an alternative, which I'm going to show you later on in the video. On a Mac, there are two options for window tiling. It's either Yabai or Aerospace. Both are really good options. I went with Aerospace because I did not want to turn off SIP, which is the system integrity protection on Mac. I would argue that Yabai does have more features, but Aerospace was enough for my use case. Essentially, in my aerospace.toml config, the key things that I use, the first one is start at login, which is set to true. And then we have the layout tiles, which is set to default at tiles. You could use accordion, but that just stacks everything on top of each other like multiple floats. So I just prefer to have it as tiles. Then we have the on focus change, which moves your mouse to the center of the screen you switch to. And then we have gap settings that you can set according to how you like it. Then we have the options with some Vim key bindings that just allows me to move between splits and windows. So for example, right here, we have two apps on one window. I can just easily toggle focus between these two apps by just doing option H and L. Option shift H, J, K and L to just swap the position of the applications up, down, left, right, all those things. And this is where we set the keybinds for actually navigating to our workspaces where our application lives. So option one till nine are all the available workspaces I can navigate to. Then we also have the letter key binds, which I use for like specific applications such as browser or finder notes or like my terminal. This just basically moves your application from one workspace to a different one. In aerospace, there's also this thing called the service mode, but then I'm gonna have to go and turn on the menu bar first so I can show you how it looks like. So here you can see the little aerospace icon at the top that shows a one and a T. So here you can see that we're actually on the workspace T and one is basically my secondary screen. If we actually go to mode service right now by doing option shift semicolon, you should see it pop up the S sign. In order to toggle float in aerospace, you need to get into service mode and then press F to toggle float. Once you toggle float, you can just go back to using the normal window arrangement. So you can just drag things around like usual, resize them. Then you can do service mode again and then press F and that should just take us out of the floating mode. Also, you can change it to whatever you like. It doesn't have to be F. Now the on window detected is going to check if you have that application open by looking at its app ID. So if it does, then it's going to directly move that application to a workspace that you defined it right here. If I just go ahead and close the Arc browser, then open it back up with the Raycast keybinds. So hyper key B, it should just open up the Arc browser and you should see that we are actually in workspace B now. To get the app ID, it's relatively simple. So all you have to do is just go into your terminal and just write the OSA script dash E and then ID of the app, then type in the name of your application and then it should just give you the app ID. 
Okay, so how do you go about setting up a hyperkey? Firstly, you will need to have Carabiner no matter what. And setting up a keybind in Carabiner isn't as hard as you think. You can just search for Carabiner elements and install it for your system and then read through the installation docs if you have any questions and you should just be good to go. The caps lock key on the keyboard is the least used key, so I just set that as the hyper key. Now there are two ways you can go about setting this up. The first way is actually the complicated way, but this way allows you to just set up sublayers, which means your keybind will most likely never overlap anything. When you first install it, you should have the carabiner folder located inside the home.config folder. Inside you'll find a carabiner.json file. If for some reason you cannot find the carabiner.json file, then you can just create one. So the first section is just about setting up the hyperkey and also setting up an action when the hyperkey is pressed single-handedly, it acts as an escape key. And the rest down here is just going to be the hyperkey that I use to open up applications that I mostly use. So for example, we have Ghosty and Arc set up here. Hyper T for Ghosty, Hyper B for Arc. You can change it according to the application name. And we also have like DaVinci and OBS, Hyper 1 and Hyper 2. So those were just the basic hyper key binds. Now we're going to get into the sub layers. For each sub layer, you would want to define the conditions for those layers. For example, if I just search for the Raycast notes really quickly so I can show you how it's set up. So here you can see that we have a hyper sub layer right here, which is the R. So if I go hyper R and then go N, it should just open up the Raycast notes. You might be wondering, like, how does this work? So the, the important thing is that for the shell command, you need to get the Raycast deep link for that specific extension. To get the deep link, just open up Raycast and then find that extension. So for this case, it's Raycast notes. So then you can go down here and then press command K and search for deep link. Then you can just use shift command C to copy it to clipboard and then paste it in the shell command. So for example, I pasted it in here and that's all you need to do. You can just get the deep link for whatever extension you want to do. Like here I have the quick emojis. So hyper RE will just open up a quick emoji for me. You can imagine this working with every single thing. So it doesn't have to be an extension. It could be an application as well. So like hyper ON will just open up Notion for me hyper pf to just open a file toggle and if you press enter on one of these files it'll just open up a finder window i have this thing called like the confetti so uh, hyper rp will just do this crazy animation on my screen so yeah it's just something fun you can do as well hyper rh will also open up my clipboard history i like having this so much because it is just so useful to me and I don't see a reason not to. So I can just copy something, open up clipboard history, press enter on that, and it just pasted it in. How easy is that? And of course, I need to have a sub layer for the Vim keys. So here I have the hyper V set as the sub layer, and then H, J, K, and L will just allow me to move up and down like arrow keys. I've gotten used to this now, and I can say that it's not that hard to get used to because it's just the caps lock key and the V, and then you just move H, J, K, and L with your right hand. So that's just perfectly fine and it works great. If you find that a little bit complicated, let me show you a simpler way to setting a hyper key with Raycast. This one does not have a sub layer though. So for those who just want simplicity, this will work fine. So if you open up your carabiner elements, you should see the complex modification page. So just head over there. And in your case, you might not have any of these things uh, in here because this is basically the previous config that I had. So what you would want to do when you come in here, you just need to go into the add predefined rule or add your own rule. And you should see something like the change caps lock to command control option shift, which is basically the hyper key. I'm going to show you how to set up this in a bit if you don't see this option. But if you do have this option, just go ahead and enable it. If you click on edit, you should see the JSON code inside here. And this is basically the code you're going to need just to get this working. So if for some reason you don't have this option, instead of pressing add predefined rule, you can click the add your own rule instead, and then just paste this code right here into that and then press save. And then of course, just make sure that it is enabled and nothing else is overlapping with this one. Now just go ahead and open up Raycast and press command comma to open the settings. 
then you can go to the extensions tab and search for the application that you want to set the keybind to. For example, I'm just going to do it for the Raycast notes. So now when you record a hotkey and when you press the caps lock key, it should show up as a hyper key. So in Raycast, you have an option to set the hyper key as a star. As you can see right here, I have that option enabled. So if I go ahead and disable that and come back here, you should also see like all the hyper keys being activated. So yeah, I'm going to turn that back on. And for example, I'm just going to set this to hyper key five. Now, if I go ahead and press hyper key five, it should just toggle the Raycast nodes. So that's basically how you set up the hyper key. You do it in carabiner elements, and then you come back in Raycast and set the hyper key specific for an app or an extension. I think you get the idea now. So for example, I have Notion set to hyper key nine, and it should also open up Notion. But if you want to set up the hyper key this way, then the first way I showed you just will not work. You won't be able to set the hyper key inside Raycast because that hyper key is defined inside the JSON of the carabiner. So it's either you go the first way or this way. So that is something you need to keep in mind. I also want to mention that Aerospace and Raycast, they can work together simultaneously. So right here, I'm doing option B to go to my Arc browser and then option T to go back to my terminal. But at the same time, I can still use my hyper key. So hyper key B takes me to the browser, hyper key T takes me back. This works because Aerospace controls the workspace for your apps, but Raycast launches the app. So when Raycast launches the app, it launches the app straight into the workspace that we have set inside Aerospace. But what if you don't like tiling? As I promised, I'm going to show you an alternative. So if you don't use tiling and I go ahead and turn off Aerospace for now, you'll see that every single one of the windows that I have just crashed into one window. Now, instead of jumping through workspaces to get to your apps, you can now jump directly to apps. It gives almost the same effect as tiling. This is similar to the accordion layout from Aerospace. As you can see here, the keybind that I press will just open that specific app. You can still toggle focus between apps using the same keybind. So right here, I'm just pressing hyper key ON to go to Notion and hyper key T to go back to my terminal. So if you don't want to use any sort of tiling, then you still have an option to just use Raycast and then use whatever window management you have. What I'm currently using is Rectangle. You'll see that we have the shell command to toggle the action from rectangle. So hyper key W and then H, J, K, and L will just toggle left, right, up, down. You, you get the point. But if you don't have rectangle and you want to use something else, you can still use the Raycast window management. So you could just come in here and set the hotkey for the window management. So those work too. And when it comes to code editing, I still use my terminal as my main code editor. So I still use NeoVim. As for my terminal emulator, I'm currently trying out Ghosty and so far it's great. Haven't had any issues where my Tmux panes were just suddenly freezing like I had in West Term, but we're not going to get in that debate. I also use a lot of Tmux, so I don't use the terminal tabs that like any emulator provides. And yeah, Tmux just allows me to jump quickly between different workspaces or you could call it as sessions. If you want to know more about the tools I use for my terminal, I will link the video on the top right corner. And I've also been trying out Zed quite a lot. And there are things you need to set up for Zed. Like some of the things are still missing, but it's it's snappy, it's fast. Um, the functionality is there. The Vim keybinds are there. The movement, the navigation, it, it's all good. So we'll see where Zed goes with that. I'll leave the link to my dot .files down below. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for sticking around. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.